Hi everybody, welcome to Euro Channel. What kind of work does a sexologist do? I usually introduce myself in my videos as a urologist and sexologist, assuming that this will be enough information for you to know what I do for a living. But your comments remind me that this may not always be the case. Gary here seems to think that sexologists only work with women. But he's not the only one. A while ago, I was at the golf club and during dinner, one of the members approached me and asked, so you are a sexologist? And I said, yes. Then he asked, well, what does a sexologist do? And I replied, what do you think I do? He said, your patients undress and you undress and then you show them how it's done. You can imagine <laughs> that I broke down laughing. This is absolutely not what sexology is all about. First of all, what education do I have to call myself a sexologist? I took a two-year education program in Berlin at the world-famous University Hospital Charité where sexology and sexual science were founded in 1919 by Magnus Hirschfeld. But there were some entry requirements. I had to be an established consultant already and have the basic qualifications in psychosomatic medicine, which is another course that runs for at least a year and a half. Sexology itself consisted of lectures and lots of practical work in sex therapy, where I had to hand in my work with patients such as sexual histories and treatment sessions, and all of this was supervised. Then there were case seminars at the hospital within the Institute of Sexual Science with real patients discussions afterwards, and so on. When I was done with all of that, I was allowed to register for the exam at the Medical Council of the County of Berlin. I took the exam and got a degree. Additionally, I also took classes on a more international level, did the corresponding exams, and became a fellow of the European Committee of Sexual Medicine and an EFS ESSM certified psychosexologist. All of this took about three years. Sexology operates in nowhere land between urology, psychiatry and gynecology. Sex always has a psychological, biological and social context. Attitudes towards sex are influenced by upbringing and education and can have a significant impact on an individual's mindset. Diseases, medication and the aging process itself alter biological function. And finally, sex very often involves other people, which makes it a social experience. Apart from the biological stuff with erectile dysfunction and so on, I learned to treat couples. In short, the method focuses on basic psychosocial needs and the meaning the couple attributes to sexual activity. Why did I want to specialize into that field? Quite simple. When I still was a doctor in hospital, oncology was 80% of my work. We performed radical prostatectomies and cystectomies, among other treatments, all of which had a negative impact on our patient's sexuality. Now you may ask, what did we do about it? Not much. Medicine 20 years ago assumed that cancer survivorship was enough and that the patients should be thankful that they didn't die. This has changed a bit over the years, but still, progress in this area is slow. However, I was dissatisfied with the treatments I was able to offer my patients. Many of them suffered a lot from losing sexual function and I thought I could do better as a doctor. I felt it to be my responsibility to deal with the consequences of the treatment because who else should do the job but the ones who performed all these procedures and made the mess. And this also includes the partners. The partner of a sexually dysfunctional patient also suffers. I hope this explains things a bit. If you want to know more about sex therapy, this video will give you a lot of interesting information. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.